Today's episode is brought to you by Domain.com. You can go hard or you can go home. You can go hard or you can go home. You can go hard or you can go home. What are you looking at? He's trying to see his future. <laughs> Welcome to Film Rights Epic Summer. Today we're getting into the making of part two with day two of filming. Again, if you have not seen our latest short, go here to watch that first because we're going to be spoiling all the fun. Off the bat, and this should be of no surprise to you if you watch the first making of episode, the second day of shooting started with more issues, including more people getting lost on the way in. I'm not kidding. But since the second half of the short was so VFX heavy, the first thing that I did was to go through the scene with Stark, making sure we were getting any possible issues out of the way up front. And then Stark did his best to help with production. This is a C-stand. This is a knuckle. Uh, it's either supposed to go on the left or the right. I don't know because... I don't do this. After that, Ryan Booth and I went through all the shots for the night, deciding on how the scene would play out visually and coming up with our game plan. It's Moby. Yeah. Okay, and then is there the Moby from the side as well, is what you're saying? Yeah, on the porch. Okay. Is this a tight shot of him? Can you, can you, no. can you, I would love a wide. But, okay. you know, we... Dan, sorry, we're too. Okay. So, Moby here, then <coughs> Moby backtracking. So I think we're going to need, like, essentially that light bar needs to be here, just full blast, like right here, basically, to kind of push porch light, so that when he ends up here, it's like Joker, and then we cut the Joker, and then there's like, you know, like a warm flood so that it looks different. Yeah. Do you want there to be a on him? Okay, so then I need another one point. Shiny border bounce or something. Just keep the get back towards it so that when that cuts off, there's a little bit of blue on here, and then you've got the back light to the porch. Then once the sun went down, Booth was able to finish up the lighting and we ran through our plans and solved any remaining issues. Which is what's so great about collaborating with someone like this. They help simplify things, finding the easiest and most effective way to execute an idea. So we're about to shoot. Ryan's almost finished with the setup. And what's cool, I think, about the setup that Ryan's done is a lot of it is DIY lighting, a lot of the stuff that we do. I mean, we have $7,000 HMI that's kicking in the scene, but also just to supplement these lanterns that are happening, he's got our clamp lights that we use all the time and things like Film Ride, which you can get from Home Depot, stretching all the way across here to add these little toppy lights so Ned can walk underneath that. We even got my DIY light bar, which we built on the show, happening over here for some, for some edge light, all working with really high-end expensive gear, which is what's really exciting. I love that Ryan will go to the more indie type stuff to do this, fits really well with our style, but we're about to shoot. I think it's gonna look pretty amazing. But finally, we had everything set and Josh out of makeup, so I ran through the shots with him, blocking out the action and talking out the emotions of the scene. Okay. Once, you're like, I mean, once you get to about here, it's like you can't take it, and then once you get to your mark, it's... Okay. Right, um, and Zach and Matt, let's cut. And then Ryan's gonna stop to the get, side of you. Right, let's roll speed. Roll yeah. speed. Speed. Uh, this is PPS two. Take five. Tim. Yeah. Can you just get me here real yeah. quick? Hand up. Second Thank six. Thank you. Should I try to block the light? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You try to block the you block the light. And then, oh my God, you know what it is. After that, we were ready for our first take, which for the actual takes, we knew we wanted a smoky atmosphere outside, but that's really difficult to pull off in the open, especially if there's any kind of wind. So I knew it would be a matter of hitting the scene with a lot of fog and then calling action at the right time, hoping the fog stayed in the scene long enough, which I was really only worried about that for the first outside shot where Ned leaves the cabin. The fog really makes a big difference. For instance, here's a shot with the wind totally blocking the fog. And then here's the shot we used with the fog in it. But now with all that locked in, we move to our first take. Ready and action.
Lights! They might leave you. Please don't leave me. <laughs> After a few solid takes, we move on to other shots. But before we get to that, let's do some sponsor loving, and then we'll get to the second half of our night when that Murphy bastard shows up again. <laughs> If you're an entrepreneur, inventor, or innovator of any kind, Domain.com is the place to go for your next great idea. They have domain extensions, a list of like 200 plus and growing extensions like .ninja, .expert, .nyc, and more to help further your brand. Plus, we can save you 20% off your domain name, your web hosting, and your email by using coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout. So when you're thinking domain names, think Domain.com. Mo-B. It goes with the mo -B. It goes with the move. You gotta get a little pop at the yeah, top. Mo -B. And then on that last, on that last one. Our next setup of the night was the final shot of the film, this slow move around the ship and up to Josh, which originally looked like this. Three tennis balls on light stands. I worked with Stark to imagine where the ship would be and at what point we would be seeing Josh. Then we ran our first take. Oh my god, my friends. My one connection to something. And then... Wait, you know what I mean? You realize, yeah, I don't want that. I want what I just got, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's when the idea hits you. Got it. How long does it move? Because I didn't see it. It's pretty long. When he comes around, I'll cue you. When I'll, I'll let you know about to come around. And will that help you to let you know when it's coming? Yeah. All right. Ready? And action. We're moving towards, we don't see you yet, we don't see you yet. We're coming around the side, and we see you. Oh my god, my friends. My only way out. You're really upset, are they okay? But wait. Cut, who's that? Then, after just one take, the movie battery died on us, so we had to move on to other shots, all of which we needed the lift for, which of course, now the lift wouldn't turn on. Did it start and start over and just not start? No, that's literally doing We were supposed to have the lift for the remainder of the shots, but after an hour wasted of trying to get that to work, I threw out that plan and came up with a new game plan so we could try to make our day. And with this new game plan, we put the camera on the back bed of a truck and threw a light on a C-stand instead of the lift. After we got all that set up, of course, the lift started working. But I still decided not to take the camera up on the lift. We had lost a lot of time at this point, so keeping the camera in the back bed of the truck would allow us to move through shots a lot quicker to make sure we got all of our performance. So we get our HMI up on the lift and set it where it needs to be, and this is acting as the light for the tractor beam of the ship, adding that real world element to build our VFX around. So we put it on the lift at the same height and position that we're going to be putting the UFO against that black sky. We also know that removing it is going to be super easy. With all that set up, we were ready to get into our performance shots, and it started raining. I'm really feeling rain now. Yeah, yeah. it's getting harder. Yeah, it's getting harder. Feel that, Ryan? I'm not, I'm not we can make this crap up. Try. It's actually getting harder. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah, you can see it. What are you guys thinking? Uh, we're thinking that everything looks really awesome, uh, and but it's raining. <laughs> well, we're already behind schedule, like a lot. I'd love to see a fire. And then you know, nature hates us and it's starts raining some more. So we covered everything and then waited for that rain to go away. Once we were able to film again, all in all between the rain and the lift, we lost about four hours off our shoot. So it was again a matter of throwing everything out, rethinking my plan to figure out what was the absolute minimum I needed to be able to finish the night and still be able to tell my story. First of that, of course, was the bulk of Josh's performance. For this, I was having Eris blow wind into Josh's face from an industrial blower that we had, again using a practical element to help sell those visual effects. The downside was pumping all that cold air into poor Josh's face in the already free Freezing cold weather. You know, uh, if this was, if his hatred for you was a well, <laughs> how full is it? Would you say at this moment, like half, half? That's not bad. That's not bad. I can, yeah, I could do with that. All right, let's do it. Yeah, they're still brotherly. Talk to me after the fans. <laughs> Action. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hatch. 
Oh, yes! Yes! Welcome, my space brethren! You must be weary from your travels! Please, I have some beverage and... Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> So we got all our performance shots, then we moved on to get our wide shots from the side that give our scene scale and geography. Then we were racing to beat the sun coming up so we could grab all our green screen shots, which I used my chroma pop mounted to some C-stands. The hardest part with a shot like this is envisioning the end result, keeping in your head what you want the final shot to look and feel like, then choosing the angle and focal length based on that. Booth also had some lights interacting with our scene to match some of our animation, but now we have this, which we can later turn into that. But we'll get into that in another episode. In the end, we grabbed our very last shot as the sun started to make its way in, so we literally finished just in time. But it was a crazy, stressful, and incredibly fun shoot with a great group of talented people. And again, if you would like to connect with all those talented people that helped make this film happen, check the notes below. Also in the notes below, you're gonna find links to a six-part series that Canon posted about the making of our film, which was produced and hosted by Jem Schofield. And finally, if you wanna show your support, we are now selling Daniel James' music for the film. It is royalty-free with terms and conditions, so you can use it for your project if you'd like. We also have a digital copy of the film with more in-depth behind the scenes, including a 50-minute onset experience, pre-vis versus final VFX comparison, ungraded footage, digital version of the script, and of course, we also have the poster on there too. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out right here, and I'll see you guys next week.